Yes, pleasant, pleasant evening to each and every one of you. I'm very happy to see you on with me at this time. So I just want to take time to welcome you on to our meeting this uh, evening. Uh, to those of you on Facebook, we welcome you on as well. Amen. And we are here. We know that God has been guiding us through this week and he has been watching over us. Uh, we know that we have had the loss of a very dear person to us uh, in ministry, uh, but we are here with a sense of awareness that death to the believer is but for a moment, it's but a sleep, and that every child that should pass from death, from life unto death in Christ, is simply waiting for the resurrection. So I want to begin with prayer, and then we'll have a moment of quiet prayer on behalf of the books family, and in remembrance of Sister Andrea, who had worked so uh, assiduously uh, in the advancement of the kingdom, especially from the aspect of health. So we will begin with prayer today, and then we'll have a moment of quiet prayer on behalf of the family. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we praise and we exalt, we magnify, and we uplift your holy name, for you are worthy to be praised. There's absolutely none like unto you. We acknowledge that you are King of kings and Lord of lords. And so as we approach your divine throne this evening, we thank you for another day. We thank you for forgiveness of sins. We thank you for life. May thy Holy Spirit be with us, O God, as we enter into the pages of your Holy Scripture. Open our understanding to receive from you the higher thoughts so that we may experience the higher ways. May your Holy Spirit be with us today and guide us through the rest of this night. Bless each and every one, we pray in Yahshua's name. Amen. And evening. We want you to take a moment, uh, just wherever you are, to remember Sister Andrea and to lift up the family in prayer. At this time, when we are finished with that moment, I would pray a special prayer on behalf of that family. Father in heaven, once again, we approach your throne. At this time, we approach your throne specifically on behalf of the Brooks family in their time of bereavement, in their time of loss. We bring them before you in a very special way, asking that you would stand by their side and that you would strengthen them Indeed, we are very conscious of the promises that you have left for us within your Holy Scriptures. But indeed, we also understand that in spite of the promises, death is an enemy. And it brings with it a sting that we cannot rid ourselves of until the final hour when death and hell is cast into the lake of fire. So but the meanwhile, eternal Father, we ask that you will reach forth as the great comforter and be by the side of the books. Bless them in a very special way. 
strengthen them, let them know that you are by their side and by the church is in support with them, that we have been praying always and we continue to lift them up in prayer. May the death of one generate eternal life in some other, some other of that family, so that indeed the work that your dear daughter had started in life, she may continue in death. We thank you for what you have done. We thank you because we can trust you to do what is best for your people. And so we commit all things into your care and keeping in Yeshua's name. Amen and amen. Bless the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. So we are here tonight and we are seeking to go further into some last day events and I'm taking you down a different road tonight but different but the same because we have been emphasizing for the past couple of weeks the setting up of Jehovah's kingdom in the latter days. As part of the last day's events, I have chosen, as I have been directed by the Holy Spirit, to bring to you a sense of awareness of the work that Jehovah is doing on behalf of his people in this the last days as part of the events of the last days. As a result, we have discovered from the book of Daniel chapter 2, the work of the setting up of the kingdom, which is symbolized in Daniel chapter 2 by the cutting out of a stone from the mountain, which I explained to you without hands. And that, that stone was to swell and become a great mountain. Tonight, I want to take you a step further into some of the events that will be taking place in the last days and how critical it is for us as children of God to be in a constant state of preparation and readiness for what is coming upon the world. And tonight, I want to begin to help you to see now that while Satan, while I should say, while God is setting up his last day kingdom, that Satan is also at work. Through the, the, the series, I would be sharing with you some of the philosophies of Satan that we must meet or encounter as we go forward with the gospel of Jesus Christ. We must equip ourselves through prayer, through fasting, through study to be able to meet this poisonous philosophy and break it down. For this is what is symbolized by the stone hitting the image on his feet. And so I want to sh begin to share with you tonight. I would not be able to finish this tonight, but I'm sort of a jumping ahead on this aspect to give it some perspective, and then I would go back from the beginning to show you what is taking place. Now, it is the setting up of a new financial fi <laughs> final hour, a new final hour religious order that is brought forth under the Ten Toes Kingdom. Let me say it again. Under the Ten Toes Kingdom, under the Ten Horns 
that I spoke to you of in Revelation 17, there is to be a setting up of a new final hour religious order. This order, this religious order, would be particularly put in place to counteract the teachings of the gospel. This religious order would have a philosophy that will be embraced by all as a natural way of life. Now, I want to take my time because I've many times I share with you things and then I come back to talk with you and I recognize you didn't sink, let it sink in as it should. But I want this to happen now. So this religious order would have a philosophy that will be embraced by all as a natural way of life. You see the thought as a natural way of life is what would make this philosophy so deceptive and so poisonous. It would be a philosophy that can and will be embraced by civil governments. In other words, the final religious order that would take place as we come to the end of time would be something that would appear to be civil and natural and not religious. It will appear unreligious, but it would be. The reason why it would be have to appear as non-religious, non-denominational teaching is because it is a philosophy that the whole or the entire world would have to embrace, including the civil government. It is a historical fact that throughout history, every government has embraced and promulgated an official or approved religion, either directly or indirectly. Whenever and wherever there is an official government, there is a religion that is support, supported by the government. Whether it is paganism in all its historical form, Hinduism, Confucianism, Buddhism, Catholicism, Islam or communism. But this final new world order religion would come under an apparent civil system of government called democracy. With the world moving, beloved, with lightning speed towards a new world order and a one world government, there would be the necessity of establishing a one world religion. And that is the time in which we live. I would take you back to Daniel 2 to see this very fact. This religion must be able to appeal to all of mankind without discriminating against any. It must be non-denominational, non-doctrinal. It must be in tune with modern knowledge, inspiring, socially conscious, and personally meaningful. It must relate not only to the thinking person's outlook, but that of the feeling person as well. It must be a defender, hear this now, of the rights of all people. 
to choose their way, to speak and to write freely, to live their lives according to their own dictates. This is what this final hour religion must be able to do. Now you've got to stay with me here now because many a people, many of God's people would be entrapped by this new world order religious system because they would think that it is propagating freedom of choice. Beloved, but that would be far from the truth as we will discover as we go through this topic. The alarming actuality is that in most of the worlds of the world today, people's hearts are already deceived and their minds have been blinded and corrupted that they are already embracing such religion without even knowing or acknowledging that it is a religion. The churches are fighting to hold on to democracy, even as a church system. The religion I would not refer to it as democracy because many may not understand. But I want to use the term that is most fitting for this religion. And it is the term is humanism. I want you to particularly write down that word. And I want you to personally give a study to this word, humanism. I would be sharing some thought on you with you on it, but I want you to personally study it yourself. For humanism is akin to democracy and would be used by the final hour satanic government to bring all the world into the worship of the beast. But the deceptive thing about this is that they would not know that it is happening. Listen very carefully though. Many governments, many states, have already embraced the teachings, the philosophy of humanism. So let me say this, and let me say it very categorically. You need to study for yourself this whole philosophy of humanism so as to ad avoid its advances on you, on your church, and upon your children. Humanism, from which many other states, government, official, religious, uh, religions have emanated, will become the official religion of the countries of the world in the very near future. It has already happened. Unlike other religions, it will not be an organized religion. It will not, it will have no headquarters. Hmm. Yes, no official headquarters. It will have no clergy. In the world today, traditional religions are being changed, ignored, or abandoned by government and being replaced by humanism. You gotta follow this, what I'm telling you now. In all of its form, 
you have religious, secular, atheistic, humanism, philosophical, with one or more of its attended isms, filling the emptiness left in its wake, beloved. Through this religion, follow me carefully here, of humanism, Satan will get the entire world to worship the beast. Now, although this religion that I'm introducing to you here does not have an official headquarters, those who are looking at last day events with eyes anointed, with the eye salve of grace, will behold, even right now, in the United Nations, something of an headquarters of humanism. Stay with me now. The first director general of UNESCO was the 1962 humanist. He was a humanist of the year, Julian Huxley, who practically drafted the UNESCO charter by himself. The first director general of the World Health Organization was the 1959 humanist of the, the year book says home, home. One of this organization's greatest accomplishments has been the wiping of smallpox from the face of the earth. And the first director general of the Food and Agriculture Organization, <coughs> excuse me, was British humanist John Boyd Or? Why am I telling you this? I am telling you that the people who were most instrumental in, form in forming <clears throat> some of the world's most powerful organizations like UNESCO, World Health Organization, uh, uh, Food and Agricultural Organization, and so forth, they have all embraced, they had all embraced the religion of humanism. So, so they would not prepare to be identified as a Catholic, a Pentecostal, an Adventist, or anything, but humanism. And I'll show you that in Daniel 2 in a while, the Daniel 2 prophecy speaks of humanism. The Bible tells us that prior to the coming of Yeshua, that the Antichrist power will bring all mankind under its worship. To do so, this power will need a philosophy that can be embraced by all religion, and more so, it must be embraced by the secular powers of the world. It is the philosophy of humanism that will unite church and state. Hear me again. It is the philosophy, the teaching of humanism that will unite church and state. This is what is brought out in the book of Daniel and the book of Revelation. And we want to go there again tonight. Humanism. Now, it is important for you to understand this. I'll tell you why. As Seventh-day Adventists, we have spoken for many years about the uniting of church and state. What we did not do is to bring, make the people wise as to the philosophy 
the teachings that would be used by the enemy to unite church and state and how they can identify it through the prophecy. Tonight we will do so. We're going back to Daniel chapter 2, verses 41 and 42. Notice what I'm dealing with here. Humanism. And whereas thou sawest the feet and the toes, part of potter's clay and part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided, but there shall be an it of the strength of iron. For as much as thou sawest the iron mixed with mercury clay, and as the toes and the feet were part of iron and part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. Now, let's begin to talk here for a while. Stay with me in Daniel 2, 41 and 42. There are two symbols used by used by Daniel in these verses concerning the makeup of the final earthly kingdom. That's the satanic earthly kingdom. They are iron and clay. So that the final earthly kingdom that would exist prior to the coming of Yeshua will have the characteristics of iron and clay. If we can unfold the meaning of these symbolic substances, we may understand the makeup of the last day satanic kingdom, its role and its philosophy. Now, let me say this. It is very important that we understand the philosophy. Now, listen why. The stone, those of you who are convinced that you are part of that little stone, that would smile the image on its feet, as I am convinced, you would have to understand that the smiting of the image on its feet is really that of the preaching of the gospel by the 144,000 in as it is so tailored to attack the philosophy of the last kingdom made up of iron and clay. I didn't know if you get that. Somebody tell me if you get that or if you want me go over that again. Talk to me, somebody. Yes, Bishop. I yes, got Bishop. It. I got it. Praise God. I got it. So, so now... No. It is not just about regurgitating history and quoting Ellen White quotation. The Holy Spirit has to help us who are to make up this little stone to tailor the gospel, the gospel to, to, to strike at the heart of the philosophy that makes up that is is that of the kingdom of iron and clay. And I'm telling you that that philosophy is humanism, but I'll show you it in the Bible in a little while. So we want to unfold the two symbolic substances. Quoting from one inspired writer, we are told that that is the prophet E.G. White, the mingling of churchcraft and statecraft is represented by the iron and the clay. You know how simple that is, eh? Bible Commentary, Volume 4, page 1168. The prophet says, the mingling of churchcraft and statecraft is represented by the iron and the clay. So immediately we know that the clay and the iron in the feet of Daniel 2 image represent church and state. My goodness. Yep. Amen? Amen. Good. The iron and the clay are here said to represent churchcraft and statecraft. One of the meaning of craft is cunning or slyness. 
it really connotes the ability to be deceptive. So what it is telling us here is that the religion, the philosophy of that kingdom of the feet and the ten toes would be a very deceptive philosophy. <clears throat> you would not easily identify its deception. And as we continue on this being, in further studies, I would show you where it came from. Now, the first thing that this tells us, therefore, beloved, is that this last day religion will certainly have the characteristic of the serpent. Daniel, having used both iron and clay, must have had a reason that is revealed in the scripture. In the scripture, prophetically speaking, of the final antichrist power, Daniel used iron to represent it. And we know that this represents Rome. <clears throat> Excuse me. We know that this iron represents Rome. So what we are learning is that as part of the last day kingdoms, Rome's teachings, Rome's doctrines and teachings would be strongly a part of that last day kingdom. So we don't have a problem in identifying the iron. Let us see if we could understand the clay. So we, because we know that the iron is used to symbolize Romanism or Roman Catholicism. While the clay, hear me out now, the clay represents humanity or humanism. I'm going to give you the text for you to read for yourself so you can see what I'm saying here is biblically factual. In, you can read Job chapter 33 and verse 6. Read Job chapter 10 and verse 9. And read Isaiah 64 and verse 8. Thank you. So let me call them over for you. This is where we meet in humanism. Represented by the clay. Job. Job. Chapter 33 and verse 6. Yes. Job 10 and verse 9. And Isaiah 64 and verse 9. Inspiration tells us. One minute. Yes. Inspiration tells us. That with rapid steps. We are approaching this period. Listen to the word from the prophet E.G. White in Evangelism 235, paragraph 1. With rapid steps, sorry, when Protestant, when Protestant churches shall unite with the secular powers, watch the word, when the Protestant, Protestant churches shall unite with the secular power to sustain a false religion. What's the word sustain? The sustaining of a false religion. The false religion that it would be sustaining would be Roman Catholicism. Proposing which their ancestors endured the fiercest persecution then will the papal Sabbath, that is Sunday worship, be enforced by the combined authority of church and state. Now, notice what is happening here. I want to explain this to you. You see, the whole church and state issue, where the church, where the state <coughs> will enforce the false Sabbath of Sunday, it will not be enforced as a religious. Uh, uh, celebration. 
it will be enforced as a secular holiday. But to, it will be the same Sunday that Rome is now pushing the fall Sabbath. And then she says there will be a national apostasy which will end only in national ruin. Think of what I'm telling you here now. Thus, it may be concluded that the symbolic substance of iron and clay of the image of Daniel 2 represents the final uniting of church and state. Roman Catholicism, the church, represented by the iron, and humankind, the state. <coughs> Excuse me. Humanism, beloved, is the most deceptive of all philosophies of the 21st century. This elusive philosophy is being accepted already by the masses of the people, both in the secular and religious world. Churches are teaching it. The Adventist churches have embraced it. All churches have, have accepted it as part. It's only self-esteem sentiment and self-talk and these type of things that you are getting within the churches. Humanism, therefore, is well positioned in its philosophy to be the religion of the new world order that will soon exist throughout the globe. Huh. Now, before I move on to identify in a more specific way humanism, as a religion, and as the religion that will dominate the world through the New World Order, let me do a little verification of the fact that the New World Order exists and is moving on quickly, moving quickly into place. <clears throat> now, I do this because there are those who would forever doubt that such thing as a new world order exists. <clears throat> and some of us are very, very unaware of its existence. In a speech to the American Congress, after Desert Storm, President Bush, on March the 6th, 1991, following the expulsion of Iraq forces from Kuwait Sash, that's just the other day. Listen what he said. <clears throat> Tonight, I come to this house to speak about the world. The world afterward until now the world were known the world we've known has been a world that divided a world of barbed wire and concrete blocks conflict and cold war now we can see a new world coming into view a world in which there is the very real prospect of a new world order. In the words of Winston Churchill, a world order in which the principles of justice and fear play protect the weak against the strong. That's a lie. But that's what they would push. <clears throat> that's what they want you to make the, you think that democracy is. A world where the United Nations freed from Cold War stalemate is poised to, fu to fulfill the historic vision of its founder. You should find out what that is. A world in which freedom and respect for human rights find a home among all nations. End of quote. <clears throat> okay. 
you know, me don't want me to talk tonight, but I'm going through. Uh, Bishop. Yes. You know, um, for those of us who is not studying on or listening to this program, the speech that uh, that that um, Bush made. No one yes. did anything wrong with it. No, that's correct. If you are not, not studying prophecy, yes, you wouldn't see anything wrong with that. Not a thing wrong with it. It sounds correct. Really very correct. good and in favor. But yes, yes. once you start studying this, you see yes. the flaws in it. Yes. That's a very important point, Sister Carol. Very important. Now, the Financial Times, <clears throat> one of the most respected and widely read newspaper on the globe, features an editorial that openly admits the agenda to create a world government. <clears throat> a jaw-dropping editorial written by the Financial Times chief, following a fierce commentator, Gideon Rachman, entitled, here it's entitled, and now for a world government, lays out the plan for global government and how it is being pushed with deceptive language and euphemism in order to prevent people from becoming alarmed. So stay with me, stay with me, stay with me. I'm about to quote the Financial Times. Very, very important. Now, this is serious and in-depth study. You must be on praying grounds. So I hope you are there with me right now. Amen? I'll be starting to quote in a short while. I quote, For the first time in my life, that is Gideon Rackman speaking, for the first time in my life, I think the formation of some sort of a world government is plausible, right, Rachman? Citing the financial crisis, global warming, hear the things there? Eh? Financial crisis, global warming, and the global war on terror are three major pretexts through which it is being introduced. So in other words, they would use global warming, they would use the financial crisis, and they would use the war on terror in order to bring in this one world government. Rachman writes that global governance could be introduced much sooner than we expect. And the president-elect Barack Obama has already expressed his desire to achieve that goal making reference to Obama's circle of advisors, which includes Straub Talbot, who in 1992 stated, this is what he said, in the next century, nations as we know it will be obsolete. All states will be, will be recognized, will recognize a single global authority. National sovereignty wasn't such a great idea after all. Before I continue to quote, when we look at what happened under COVID, we will recognize that the, 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 the powers that be that are moving towards a new world order, one world government, was testing the waters to see how the people would, would respond to global government governance and the institution that they chose to do that global governing of people was the World Health Organization. I am sure that what they would have learned is that the, the world is right and ready, that the churches are ready and that the pastors are ready they are all ready to fall at the feet of whatever order 
the government would put in place because no one is at this time ready to face true persecution and even jail and death for, the, for their freedom to fellowship and their freedom to preach the gospel. Rachman then concedes that the more abstract term like global governance, which is often used by top globalists like David Rockefeller as a veil to offset accusations that a centralized global government is the real agenda. Beloved, all this language, he said, is merely a trick of soothing language that is used to prevent people from reaching for the rifles in America. Taken from his article, this end of quote, taken from by an article by Paul Joseph Watson, 13 December 2008. Indeed, beloved, events are moving fast for the establishment of what is known as a new world order. In the World Peace Plan of 2010, by Robert Mueller, first published on March 10, 2003, 20 points were, were for peace and the establishment of a one world government was suggested. I'm going to give you three of them. One, point number one. The world religious religions should put an end to all religious conflict. That's the first thing they suggest. You know the greatest conflict that will exist would be between the Sabbath and Sunday. You're already aware, but not just Sabbath and Sunday, it would be between all the festivals of Rome, all the festivals, all the holy days or holidays. So you would have that contested and it is suggested that it should be put away. To support peace, disarmament, and demilitarization. To cooperate on a world spirituality, on a world spirituality, and to draft in common a world code of ethics. That is, that part of this whole world peace plan that is part of the new world order, this thought of a world, I uh, just want to get back that there, a world code of ethics is really saying they want to draft something that will take the place of the Ten Commandments. So let me go to point number two. Just now, the United Nations, I'm still at point number one, should create a world spiritual agency which brings the resources, visions, and wisdom of the spiritual traditions to bear upon, the, upon world problems. In other words, this whole system that is being set up would use that of the World Spiritual Agency using their visions and so forth at the, uh, um, uh, and, and their wisdom of spiritual traditions to bear upon world's problems. So as the problems of the world escalates, they would now see the church and its tradition to, to bring about the solution it's happening, it's going to happen, it's going to happen in quick succession, beloved. Point number two. Eminent thinkers to meet during the year to draft a world constitution. And point number three. More and more nations celebrate world days proclaimed by the United Nations. So they already have such things. You notice it. Every time you turn, there's another celebration of some day. There's Earth Day, there's International Day of Peace, United Nations, 
Health Day, Human Rights Day, World Health Day, World Food Day, International Children's Day, International Women's Day, and the Day of the Elderly, National War Memorial Days, and I can go on and on until we reach a place where they have instituted Sunday as the World Day of Worship. I could give you more and more evidence concerning the truth of the existence of the new world order. So I can tell you tonight, and I haven't given you all the information, that without a doubt, a new world order is existing and it will escalate with a one world religion. Don't forget that one of the suggestions made by Robert Mueller in the World Peace Plan for the establishment of a one world government was that the world's religion should put an end to all religious conflict to support peace, disarmament, and demilitarization. To cooperate mm -hmm. on a world spirituality on world spirituality and to draft a code of ethics. With such suggestion before us, beloved, on the table, there can be no doubt that there is such thing as a new world order. And as I told you before, there would be three fundamentals that will transfer the new world order from a philosophy to an actual physical one world government. They are the new world order political system and the new world order political system would be democracy. Listen again, that's what's going on now. That's what America is working hard to get the entire world to be a democratic world. And everybody concluded the best system, the best political system that you could live under is democracy. If you try to fight against democracy, you would, people would want to know if you are a mad person. So, the, the, so the, one, the, a new world order political system. Two, a new world order economic system. And a new world order religious system. These are the three fundamentals that will transfer the new world order from just a philosophy into a true kingdom mentioned in Daniel 2 in the feet where the we are the Rome, the iron and human humanism under democracy Woo! get that somebody humanism under democracy would come together to form this final kingdom called the New World Order. That's the truth about it. Now, for the next few minutes, I want to clearly identify, help you identify the concept of humanism because from next Wednesday, I would be going to trace this false religion from Satan at the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and help you to be able to understand it and just shun it. It is part of the new world order religion or religious system that humanism with its all-embracing philosophy will fit in. It is through the religio-political system of humanism and Roman Catholicism, or one may say democracy and Roman Catholicism, that the way will be open for the coming in of the Antichrist. The Apostle Paul forewarned the church today. He said, let no man deceive you by any means. For that they shall not come, except they are coming falling away first. And that man of sin will reveal the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalted himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, 
showing himself that he is God. Now, this person that is styled a man of sin, the son of perdition, is the Antichrist and will seek to be worshipped. This is further brought out in the light of Revelation 13. Revelation 13. That's where I'll, I, I will be going there in a short while uh, for you to understand this whole thing. But I want to I don't want to go there as yet. I don't want to go there as yet. I want to just take some time. Let me see if I could get that here in my notes to sort of uh, um, bring a clear understanding to you on what humanism is so that when I reach there, where I'm going into Revelation 13 soon, uh, you would be able to follow me in the light of what I'll be bringing to you uh, from uh, the deceptive philosophy from the tree of knowledge of good and evil and uh, tying it in with what Satan would be using in this last day to do the work, beloved. So I'm just seeing if I could get that in my notes here uh, to share with you and help you to understand uh, more clearly. Yes, some of it is right here. Good. Mm -hmm. Bless the name of the Lord. Any question by the meantime? Anyone has any question they would like to ask? Anything they would like to get clearer as we go forward? Good. So I want you to keep in mind then where we are going. We are staying in Daniel chapter 2. We are stripping apart. Uh, Yes. Can you make clear like some of the things? I do do understand everything. I do totally understand everything you're saying, but sometimes, you know, little things might slip us and we may not know. But like what what things could be presented to us? We know a lot of these things would be, be in disguise that we may choose to accept, not knowing that it's putting us into that I mean, when when we hear about that, everybody, a, a lot of people's mind will flash on the Sabbath day, okay, mm -hmm. of not accepting Sundays. What are some of the other things that can just sneak by us without us re really realizing that we are what we are accepting? Right. So allow me to answer you this way. It is not so much about knowing the things. It's about having a very close walk with God and studying the word of God. Once that is taking place, nothing will slip by you. You with me? Absolutely. That is a given. Yes. But, but that, is, that is a given. But, but can you still just show us an example of something that can slip by us? If we are not careful. Um, well, nothing is coming to mind directly uh, as a concrete thing right now, because my, my mind is somewhat focused upon the entire thought uh, that is being of, of, of humanism. Um, so let me just say this then. But one of the ways that things I could tell you um, it may not be a specific thing, but a, a, a sort of a idea or or teaching or thought. One of the main thing you've got to look for in this is that of, okay, let me use this as a thought. Positive thinking. Positive thinking would be a very, now nothing is wrong with positive thinking, but when it is misused, um, it would be something that could easily slip by thinking that you are doing something good. Now, one of the things that you will see, and as I go on in this topic, I will help you all to understand. One of the deception and positive thinking that people don't like to deal with, um, when positive thing is, thinking is taken outside of uh, the scriptures and the, and the guidelines of the scriptures and the Holy Spirit, 
there, there enters in a certain denial of the existence of evil. Okay. There's a subtle denial of the existence of evil. So the, 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 the fine are the, even e things that are wrong, things that are openly wrong, they would find a way to put a positive spin on it instead of calling it wrong. Can I say this uh, uh, as an example? The, yes. the, 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 whole, the whole style now of letting children decide what gender they want to be. Some oh, yeah. people could look at that as that's a good thing. You're giving somebody a choice. Yes. You know, they're a living human being. But yes. it, it is, if you look at it, you know it's evil. Correct. So, so, so that's so, something so, like that. Yes, something like very that. much so. That could be one example. And so as I go along with this study, I really need you to be consistent on a Wednesday night, beloved. Because where I'm going with this, you're going to want to have that information. And it's not merely an information about what is going on with the Antichrist right now and what they are doing, but a system that God has given so that we will be full, fully protected from the Antichrist if properly followed. So you don't want to miss it. So let me just tell you something quickly. When I go in, and I, I would do that um, uh, maybe just let me get something. Right. As I said, I want to um, give you some understanding of humanism, and I'm doing this because I want you to have this information before I start over next week, Wednesday, please God. Now, there are different types of humanism. Now, many leading academics and philosophical thinkers believe and purport the knowledge of good and evil as given to them by Satan. We didn't not recognize that it. it's all around us and we're not recognizing it. That knowledge is the philosophy, hear me well, that human beings have the sovereign right to determine for themselves what is right and what is wrong. That's the bottom line of humanism. And that was the bottom line of the deception and sin at the tree of knowledge of good and evil. This philosophy, which is fast becoming the religion of the world, is called humanism. Now, as we take a little time, two or three minutes before I close, to look into the universal eschatological religious beliefs and its role, that is of humanism, in the last days, I want to take the time specifically to define it for you, and then I'll close for tonight. The word humanism has a number of meanings. And each meaning of the word, each meaning of the word represents different types of humanism with a different type, with the different types being easily separated and defined by the use of the appropriate adjective. Now, this gentleman, Frederick Edwards, who was the ex executive director of the American Humanist Association in his talk that had been presented to various audiences over the years and copyright in 1989, gives the following very definition of humanism. They don't might I'll go. One, there is what is called lit literary humanism. It is the devotion to the, hum to the humanities or literary culture. Two, Renaissance humanism. This one is powerful. Renaissance humanism is the spirit. And I like how it put it here. It is the spirit. Don't just look for teaching. Spirit is the spirit of learning that developed at the end of the Middle Ages with the revival of classical letters and a renewed confidence in the ability of human beings 
to determine for themselves truth and falsehood underscore Renaissance humanism because that's exactly what happened at the tree of knowledge of good and evil. It's coming back here as it was in the beginning. It's going to be today. Then there's cultural humanism. It is This cultural humanism is the rational and empirical tradition that originated lastly in ancient Greece and Rome, evolved throughout Europe history, and now constitute the basic part of, of Western approach to science, political theories, ethics, and law, and so forth. And then there's philosophical humanism, uh, Christian humanism, modern humanism, naturalistic humanism, a scientific humanism, all of these has one lesson, and that is to tell human beings that they, without God, is sufficiently intelligent and powerful enough to determine what is right and what is wrong. Now, before I go into Revelation 13, I want to get that to you strongly from the book of Genesis, and then I'll bring you to Revelation 13, beloved, and you would see. Hallelujah. What is happening in the last days and how we prepare we ought to be. So get ready for me for next Wednesday as we begin to unfold the last day religion from the very place in the garden. The last day religion as it originated with Satan through Eve, through Adam, in the garden. We are going to be talking about that and bring it down to the last days as we watch the events unfold and we get ready in the name of Yahshua, our Messiah. If there's no question, I would pray and close for this. I don't have a question, Bishop. Yes. Thank you, brother. Hallelujah. Well, thank you. Tonight. It's Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love and your mercy towards us. We thank you for the blessed truths, O oh God. We thank you for revealing light into our minds. May we be obedient to you and may we walk in the paths of righteousness. We thank you as we commit all things to you. Help us to be ready because soon and very soon it will all come to an end. Continue to be with us as we prayed in the beginning. We pray at the end. Continue to be with the Brooks family and let them continue to be strong as we continue to stand by their side in Yeshua's name. Amen and amen. Bless amen. the Lord. Amen. Beloved, I'm amen. excited. Amen. I'm excited for next week, Wednesday, as we go directly to Genesis at the tree of the knowledge of good. And amen. 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 Shalom alaikum to everyone. Shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom. 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 Good night, everyone. Good night, good night, good night. Look forward for you on Friday. Please the Lord. Praise Have the Lord. Praise the Lord.